red and yellow and pink and green purple and orange and blue i can sing a rainbow sing a rainbow badly wear a rainbow and read a rainbow too thanks to these super collectible and super instagrammable editions of stephen king books this is the video personally i've been waiting for since i started my channel this is a look at the full set of the mid noughts Hodder Rainbow Editions. Hi everyone, I'm Dave Musson, at Dave Musson on Instagram, and this is the place where I celebrate the works of one Stephen Edwin King. Thanks so much for dropping by. Now, normally I spend my time going through each of his books and giving you 19 reasons to read every single one of them, but every so often I like to throw out a special. And when it comes to specials, this is the one I've been excited to record. So today I wanna to take you through some of the most Instagram friendly editions of Stephen King books out there. The Hodder produced UK King Bow editions that came out in the mid noughts and covered just under 50 of King's works in a variety of colors and spiky fonts. Now these are super collectible and people have been going crazy for them over the last couple of years. And to be honest, some of them go for some quite stupid amounts of money online. Now, collecting these editions became a bit of a lockdown activity for me and I managed to get the full thing done in just under a year and in this video I wanted to take you through the entire collection, show you each book, talk about what I think about the cover and the colour choice and all of those kind of things and just let you indulge in a full collection of these Hodder Rainbow Kings. And it's actually an interesting time to be talking about Rainbow Editions from Hodder because this year, in 2021, Hodder have started a new set of Rainbow Editions. The plan is to keep releasing them up until 2024 to coincide with the 50th anniversary of the publication of Carrie, King's debut of course, and this time is going to cover his full spectrum of works. Now the first few batches of these Rainbow Editions from 2021 have been released. I don't have any of them yet, but you know, if anyone from Hodder is watching and fancies sending me some to do an unboxing of, I'd be more than happy to help. No, seriously, do send them over if you can. So, as I said, I completed my collection earlier in the year and I will take you through the full thing in a moment. So this is gonna be a slightly longer video than normal, I reckon, but before I show you each of these books, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background about the series and a few facts that I either know are true or are just my very best guesses. So this series was current from around 2006 to 2009. And I got into Stephen King in 2010, so these editions were still everywhere when I was going crazy for him. So they do have a very special place in my heart from a nostalgia point of view, but they just look really cool as well. For me, I think it's just how distinctive they are that makes them really appealing. The spiky font, the bold colours, the minimalist covers, everything about them is just really, really shelf friendly. And to think that these came out years before Instagram was a thing, it's quite something. So some things to note before we jump into the collection. These editions go up to just after sunset. So obviously there's a good 15 years of Stephen King works that aren't available in these original rainbow editions. And even within that initial run, there are a few that weren't included. The Dark Tower series didn't form part of the original rainbows. Cycle of the Werewolf isn't available as an original rainbow. And neither is the Green Mile. Now, when it comes to the Green Mile, as far as I can tell, it looks like here in the UK, the Green Mile was published by Penguin, whereas everything else is covered by Hodder, hence not being a rainbow edition. Oh, and of course, the Colorado Kid, which was out when these came out, that's a hard case crime one. So again, no rainbow edition of that. So there are a few interesting quirks to note before we jump into an in-depth look at the books themselves. Now, most of them are on a white or a slightly tinted background, but the Backman books are on a black background because obviously Backman was King's dark half. Now, the most distinctive element of them, of course, is the boldly colored spine. Now, most of them are a solid color, but there are a few that have a white spine with a colored text on them. Now, a lot of people ponder as to why a handful of them have a white spine whereas everything else is colourful. Now I don't have this on any authority but using my best intuition the conclusion I've come to is as follows. 
the books with the white spines and you'll see them as we go through were the ones that were new additions when this original Rainbow series came out. So to me, it looks like the new ones had the white spine, whereas all of the reissues of the older books had a coloured spine. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, I've got a Salem's Lot that has a white spine, that doesn't apply to that, it kind of does. And I'll explain why when we get there. Now, I do have a couple of frustrations with these Rainbow Editions. They are minor, but I may as well throw them out here. Number one is that when you put these books in chronological order of release, which as everybody knows is the best way to store anything, CDs if you still have CDs, vinyl, and of course books. When you do that with the Rainbow Editions, you just get a random smattering of colors. Now, I quite like the look of that on my shelves, but it would have been really nice to have a smooth rainbow from red through to purple and all the way back to red as you went through in chronological order. Also, as we'll get to, some of the colour choices are a bit strange, but I'll talk you through those once we get there. Okay, enough talk. We've got nearly 50 books to look at. Let's go and have a look. Okay, let's do this. Let's look at these Hodder Rainbow King editions. We're going to go in order of publication. So, starting off, Carrie, obviously. Carrie White is no ordinary girl. Yeah, I mean, eh, could be better. Could just have left that off and it probably would have been stronger. But good, strong, blood red. There's your spine. Nice and bloody. Um, suitable colour for Carrie. Um, and there's the back of it. Um, love this, uh, this picture of King, by the way. Um, that's the one that we get throughout all of these. So yeah, strong start. Solid colour scheme. Totally understand that. That one is Carrie. Okay, so Salem's Lot, which is one of the white spined ones. Now I mentioned I had a theory about why this one has a white spine, despite it being a book from the 1970s. Now, the key thing here is the illustrated edition and this line here with previously unpublished material, two extra stories and a new introduction by the author. This is effectively a new edition of Salem's Lot, which came out during the time that the rainbows were alive. So it does fit my theory that the white spines are the new books during this range um, and that's why I think Salem's Lot has it. I really like this one. This is the first rainbow book I ever got actually. Um, love the Marston house with all the evil roots and there's some cool drawings in here and it comes with um, One for the Road and Jerusalem's Lot as stories in there as well. So there's your spine um, and a nice bright green cover. The only issue I have with this is actually the green. Now I think it's a it's a cool green, works really well, but that green to me says Tommy Knockers. And when we come to the Tommy Knockers, um, well, you'll see. Let's just say they could have swapped the colours and it would have made for a really positive start in terms of trying to attempt to make a rainbow. But anyway, there's Salem's Lot. Shining next, and an interesting image to pick up from The Shining that you don't see that often in editions of The Shining is the wasps. And the wasp's nest is probably one of the scariest scenes actually. So I credit to Hodder for picking that out as the, uh, as the image choice, but never overlook the past. Really, is that the best tagline you could come up with? Um, again, probably one that would have been better left off. But a nice yellow spine there um, and a wasp on the back. Um, but yeah, good, solid. So night shift, a uh, nice turquoise colour scheme here. I think personally this would have been better if the scarecrow had been turquoise with a black nose. Um, it's almost like the turquoise ink was too expensive and they were being very sparse with it. Nothing is ever quite as it seems. Yeah, I guess that works for night shift. Although, really, again, you could have just left that off and it would have been fine. There's a spine. So the stand next, first came the days of the plague. That's probably the first tagline that is actually quite good. But again, really a running theme here. I don't think you need taglines. This is Stephen King after all. Just get on with it, get into it. I like the bird. Um, it's an interesting choice of imagery again from all of the images that you get in the stand that they go for the bird. I guess it kind of works. It does look a little bit like a sparrow, which makes me think of the dark half, but hey, I'm not going to complain too much. Interesting colour as well. And this is a chunky, chunky book. Um, this is one of the earliest rainbows I got as well. I think this was the second one. This one holds a special place in my heart because when I was rereading the stand, it was right around the time my eldest son was born, and I actually read the ending of this to him while he was asleep in his cot, aged two days. So um, that's probably fucked him up for life. So the Dead Zone next, and interestingly, we randomly have two editions. This one here that has kind of got a pink wash and a bit of a peach side, and then this one which is a more of a reddy pink um, with a sort of pink bold side. It's the same cover, 
Um, it's just that pink wash and a slightly different faded look. But you know, the real reason, the real reason why there's two copies of The Dead Zone is because it is the best Stephen King book. It was as if his eyes were awake and the rest of him still slept. Yeah, I don't really need that. Again, take off the taglines, they don't really do that much for me. But I do like this. Again, the image choice, an interesting one. They kind of seem to be taking deep cuts on the image choices for these. Um, but I think this works. Um, it's mysterious enough to try and hook you in. And come on, it's the dead zone, I'm gonna like it, right? So Firestarter, one of the trickier ones to get hold of. This is, a, I, love, I love the imagery on this. I think this is really, really great. Good choice of color um, with the red. I suppose orange might have been uh, a sensible choice as well. There we go, nice bold red. Um, and this is where they seem to randomly shift to put in a pull quote in. It's almost like, nah, I can't be bothered to come up with a tagline for Firestarter, let's just pull a pull quote in. The pull quote is probably better than a tagline, but again, do we need it? It's Stephen King, no, just, just let it be kind of thing. Um, interestingly, with my edition of this, <laughs> which I bought online, and the person selling didn't even realize, and they did give me a lot of my money back for it, which is fair enough, but look at this. Got a load of notes that somebody clearly made when they were um, trying to sort out a flat. So I hope those people, whoever owned this first, um, were happy in their flat, and I also hope that Charlie McGee haunts their dreams for defiling a copy of Firestarter with all of these silly notes. Cooge! So we've got Cujo, we've got the St. Bernard with a yellow tongue, a nice bold yellow spine. I love everything about this apart from, you guessed it, the tagline, his bite is worse than his bark, much, much worse. Come on, we don't need that, we don't need it, but spine looks good, dog is good. Um, yeah. So we have our first Backman book. This is interesting that The Running Man is the first Backman book and not The Long Walk, but it seems to be that The Long Walk doesn't have a standalone publication here in the UK. I don't know why that is, it's probably something to do with publishing houses. Obviously Rage by this point had been taken out of print so we weren't going to get a standalone Rage. I would love a standalone Long Walk, but like I say in the UK we don't seem to get one. But this is what I was talking about earlier black background because Richard Bachman is Stephen King's dark half. Seems to be trying to cram in as many font styles onto one cover as possible here. We've got spiky, we've got a serif, and we've got this one as well. Um, but it works, I think it, it, it looks good. Nice blue spine. Um, and look, the photo, I like this touch as well. This, see, this is, where, this is where I really like these. They do put some little um, tidbits in that are fun. Not only do you get the black for the dark half, but you get a different author photo as well. So it's still Stephen King from a long time ago, but there you go. It's just a little bit different just on the Backman books, which I think is pretty cool. So different seasons. Um, I mean, a no-brainer for the image choice really, isn't it? The train tracks. And this one, this one is probably one of the strongest as a whole cover. I'm um, not sure about the cannabis leaf, but hey, just wanted to get a bit more green in, I guess. But why they chose that shape of leaf is an interesting one. Anyway, it includes the story which inspired the Shawshank Redemption. Um, I'm surprised they didn't put and Stand By Me as well, given that this image is from the body which came from Stand By Me. Um, but I suppose they only had so much space. Um, nice green cover, really nice rich green. This makes me think of like New York Jets and stuff. We go, nice cannabis leaf on the back again for some reason. Good cover, really good book. Christine now, another tricky one to get hold of, and one of these ones with a random colour wash instead of a white background. Yeah, I like this. Uh, I think the car could be a little clearer. Um, the tagline is actually okay. Um, still don't really need it. I personally would have preferred this to be a white background and have Stephen King in the orange, but hey ho. Um, and there's a nice spine, dark orange. This one is a bit of a battered copy. If anybody has a spare one in a nicer condition, then um, you know where to send it. So the eyes of the dragon. Um, not one of my favourite books, but I do actually like this cover. Um, again, don't need that, that just doesn't add anything. But a nice blend of blue and black. This is a good balance of the accent colour and the black and white. I think this one works pretty well. Um, very battered spine. Whoever had this before me clearly loved it. Um, or just kept opening it, deliberately trying to break its spine because they hated it. Who knows? Um, but yeah, nice blue. Pet Cemetery. Again, this one I think works really well. Nice addition of the cat on the old gravestone there. No, don't need that. Put something else in this space instead of that. That doesn't add anything for me. But good bold pink. Um, there we go. Scary fucking book. So, one of my least favourite Stephen King books. Um, and a pretty bland cover as well. Randomly, this one includes that it's the international bestseller. I mean, it's Stephen King. They're all bestsellers. Um, but there we go. We've got 
a nice purple. I think the spine looks really good. Um, Peter Straub's name doesn't look as good as Stephen King's in that front. I don't really like the chess board stuff. I think they could have found a better image, to be honest. But when you've got two names taking up so much space, there's only so much you can do, I guess. And there we go, there's the talisman. No picture of Peter Straub, no picture of Stephen King on the back. So, uh, interesting. Okay, back to Backman and back in black. We are on thinner. See, look how much clearer this is without a pull quote or without a silly tagline. I think this just is way bolder, way stronger, um, nice yellow. Weirdly, the hardback of this, and it should be noted that there aren't hardbacks of all of the paperbacks. Again, strange decision. Don't know what was going on there, but the hardback of this is in a blue, I think, instead of the yellow, which is interesting. But there we go, thinner and the Richard Backman in inverted commas photo instead of Cy King. And more Backman for you. Another black one, the Backman books. Um, that's a little a nod to more of the Running Man and potentially a long walk as well. Um, this one is really handy for when you're trying to make an actual rainbow with the spines because this has got a real sort of violet feel to it and it's about the only one. They're very few and far between in terms of the purples in this collection, which is a bit frustrating if you're trying to make something look pretty for Instagram. So the Backman books makes plenty of appearances in my rainbows. Okay, a couple of editions of Skeleton Crew. Now, another thing that happened during this run were there were a couple of big movie releases came out, The Mist and 1408. So for the books that those stories are collected in, they also did a movie tie-in edition. So keeping the same font, and they made those movie tie-ins black and gold, which I think looked really good as a spine. The front cover, it, I don't know, kind of, kind of loses the momentum a little bit of the uh, of the rest of the series but there you go there's a nice movie tie-in one there um big on the mist and skeleton crew we've got the blue one here sort of a blue wash um again i don't need that that doesn't really mean much and tied to these two um we've got this is a very difficult one to get hold of um it's a promo copy of the mist specifically um, I've seen this one go for crazy amounts of money online. Um, the price has really gone up in the last six months or so. I was lucky enough to pick this up in a bundle for not much money at all. Um, and it's quite a, quite a prized one in the collection now because of it. But um, yeah, that's what, the, that's what the promo version of The Mist looks like. So we're on a bit of a blue streak here. We've got It next. This works, this is simple. One of the greatest storytellers of our time. I and mean, that's fine, quite, you can use it wherever. But really, does it add anything? No, probably not, but I like the minimalism of this design. Um, and I mean, this is another chunky one. This is difficult to make stand up, but there you go. It, go for it. Yes, another blue one. So we're up to misery with this typewriter that sort of looks like an angry cow. I mean, I get the typewriter symmetry, but is that really the best they could have done? Anyway, um, this is quite a classic tagline for misery. Again, doesn't really need it in my opinion, but what do, you, what do I know? That's why I'm not in publishing. Um, there's Misery. Um, but yeah, I like, I like this just because that makes me laugh. I mean, look. Moo. So, the Tommy Knockers. Now, you remember when we were talking about Salem's Lot, that the green made me think of, this, of the Tommy Knockers. And yet, look, the Tommy Knockers is red, the colour of blood, which is what vampires drink. Just what the colours, guys. I mean, this is... Like that green from Salem's Lot, that's Tommy Knockers. If you go down to the woods today, fuck off. Um, but yeah, really like the bold red of this. Um, and I actually really like the cover, I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, another tricky one to get hold of. I appreciate I've been quite negative on some of these. So if people from what Hodder are watching, they're probably not going to send me any of their new ones, are they? But, um, you know, this is coming from love. I'm just being uh, critical because I'm coming from love. And, you know, I still love this front and I love the feel of them. And the bold spines are just so cool. And I love that font. So, Hodder, I still love them. Um, and, you know, these have been sitting on my shelves for a long time in many cases. You know, you just find, you find faults with the things you love the most, don't you? So don't let that put you off. Please still send me copies of the new ones, yeah? So, taking ownership of this book was a momentous occasion for me. This was the final rainbow book that I needed to complete my collection and I finally got my hands on it in I think January of 2021. George Stark, not a very nice guy, don't need that. Um, but I like this cover. Um, I mean, I'd stared at it for so long online that I sort of flitted between loving it and hating it because I just wanted it. Um, but there we go, 
that was the final one. That was the one where I knew my journey was done. So into the 90s, and got another blue one, four past midnight, right time, wrong place. Again, don't bother with that. Um, this feels a bit like, let's be honest, this feels a little bit like it was the last one they needed to design and they lost the will to live slightly because that's crap. But interesting colour. Um, feels like a very different sort of shade of colour compared to the others, but yeah, I like it. It's good. So we're back on the orange, needful things. Another one that people seem to have um, difficulties tracking down. Again, buy now, pay later. You know what I think about these taglines. Um, but I think that, that works as a, as a minimalist cover, um, like the orange. Um, I personally would have gone for a really deep green, kind of like the green we're going to see on Bag of Bones in a few books' time, because the um, awning outside Needful Things um, is green, and they make a big point of it looking very rich and lush and green. Um, but hey, it's almost as if the people who designed these hadn't read the books. Gerald's Game. Blue, slight colour wash. Again, tagline, not really adding much value, but strong blue. Um, again, an interesting choice of colour, quite a masculine choice of colour for such a, uh, uh, a book with such a strong woman character. Again, that's not a criticism as such, just interesting, um, given the content that's inside. I'm not suggesting it should be pink by any means, but um, just wouldn't have necessarily expected blue to be the colour they went for for Gerald's game. Dolores Claiborne, another little bastard to get hold of. Um, this one, I think, is actually an ex-library book. Um, yeah, there we go. Swansea Libraries. So some people in Wales read this a few times and then eventually it's ended up on my shelf. Strange little doll on the seat here. I like this one, though. Um, I like the colour. Again, a bit of a different colour, different feel of colour to the other ones. Sort of goldy yellow. Um, and a fair quote for this book, because this book is fucking wonderful. Nightmares and Dreamscapes then. Um, good choice of green, I think this green is pretty cool. And interesting to use the uh, the toads from Rainy Season. Um, there's probably more iconic stories in here that they could have taken, but I do actually like that as a choice, I think that's pretty cool. Um, a bumper collection, I mean, no shit, there's 24 things in there, but um, what have you. Again, we don't need that, that is much stronger without it. But yeah, nice green. I think the thing I'm finding as we go through this with the with the taglines and the pull quotes is really they're going for such a minimalist style and it works really well. You don't need these tags. I think if there's a tag or a quote on there, it should add something to the overall image. And none of the ones we've seen really have, which I think is my problem with them. But again, not discard not disregarding the fact that I fucking love these books, they're so cool. Um, and hey, I'd love to compare them with the new ones. So Insomnia next. Um, this is nice. This is almost a sort of Aston Villa claret. Bold use of the scissors, I like it. You know what I think about the tagline. Um, so this one I actually got hold of. This is, um, of all of my collection, this is the one that didn't cost me anything because my friend Kelly, who was one of my constant quizzers um, down in Wales, um, she had this edition and wasn't collecting the rainbows. I had a different edition of Insomnia. so. We just did a swap by post, so thank you so much Kelly, because I was really struggling to get hold of this one and ended up basically just getting it for the cost of postage, um, which was really cool, and I hope you like the copy that I sent to you. Okay, so Rose Madder, another one that is traditionally quite tricky to get hold of. I actually randomly found this in the second-hand bookshop in my local town, and like I, I was out with my wife at the time, it cost me two pounds, and I was literally buzzing for the rest of the day to get hold of it. But what I love about this, so people will probably see this as the, the sort of brownie bronze one. But look, look at, look at my spine. <gasps> it's a weird purple. Now, this was part of a collection that had all been donated together to this, to this shop. And they were all sun faded on the spine. And this is interesting. It's kind of like the, um, the Black Star record from David Bowie. Apparently, if you leave that out in the sun, it fades and shows you a special star or something. I don't know whether this is intentional, whether just the brown bronze paint just does something weird in the sunlight, but yeah, it's an interesting one. It's almost like if I can get hold of a rose madder that is brown on the side, I probably would still buy it. But it's a nice little quirky thing. Who would have thought that brownie bronze would turn into that colour? Weird. So we've got to lump these two together, haven't we? Desperation and The Regulators. We've got, came out on the same day, they are twinner books, and 
there is a bit of thought put into these here. Same colours, obviously this is the dark half version, um, but I do feel like we can see the spines here, um, one and the other, but I do feel like there was a bit of a missed opportunity here. You could have made a cover that you slotted together like the original hard covers and made one big picture, but well, I guess they decided not to make that choice. It'd be interesting to see what they do with Desperation and Regulators in the new rainbows and whether when you slot them together, you get a whole image. Okay, bag of bones. Right, so this is the green that should have been Needful Things. Let's get that out of the way. What the fuck is this? Like, I keep questioning whether I've remembered this book correctly or not, but I've put it out to various different people and nobody remembers a fucking bird being in this. Like, this should be the bird that's on the stand. I don't know what they were thinking on Bag of Bones here. And then this quote saying that Bag of Bones is his mesmerising best. I mean, I put Bag of Bones in my top 10. I love it. But, I mean, that's just a lie. So, yeah, Bag of Bones is a random one, this one. Really random. We're racing towards the end of the 90s. And another green one here. Girl who loved Tom Gordon. I mean, not only is this quote just not adding value. It's from the Daily Fucking Mail, who are a bunch of racist pricks, so they can fuck off. Um, but... Interesting choice of imagery, considering how strong, uh, how important a piece of the plot baseball is to this story. Um, we've got a tape with all the tape wound out. So again, probably pitching, no pun intended, to a UK audience, um, rather than put a baseball glove on the front, for example. Um, they put a cassette tape, that's something that we silly Brits can understand compared to baseball. But like the green on this, quite a nice colour. Um, this is more, I guess, what, Philadelphia Eagles than New York Jets. Um, just without the metallic shine, but I like it, I like it. Hearts in Atlantis then, another orange one. I like the design on this a lot, I think it works. Um, it captures the spirit of what really hooks these stories together. Again, we don't need that quote, but I think it's a fair quote to include on there. Um, there we go, this one took me a while to track down as well. Um, seems to be the orange ones, particularly tricky to get hold of. So, Dreamcatcher. Um, I like the colour, again, it's sort of close to Aston Villa colours. Um, could do with more of the red on the feathers for me. Um, I mean, this makes me laugh. Classic King. Yeah, Classic King. I mean, like, he wrote all of his books while doped up to the nines on painkillers while recovering from a life-changing accident and wrote them out in longhand and all of them included aliens that are shat out of people's arses and then take over their brains. Classic King. Classic. What the fuck? So when we're talking holy grails of the original Rainbow Run. Ironically, it's a book that isn't even a hotter one. So this is Black House, as you can see, and this is a pain to get hold of. Published by Harper. This is problem number one. It's not a hotter book, but Harper saw what Hodder were doing and tried to make an edition that sort of at least complemented the talisman. You can see they've kind of gone for the same sort of font, but this is like a, a drunk, blurred version. But Black House, pain in the ass to get hold of, not only because it's Harper which throws some people, um, but also because its ISBN number is also the same as a completely different cover. So I had to send back four different editions of this before I got hold of this one. And the people out there on the internet who are just buying up these books and trying to sell them on for a profit, they know now how difficult this one is to get hold of. Um, I've seen this one be listed on sale for £100 or more which is stupid. I paid six pounds for this. Um, just persist, you'll get there eventually. You really will. And even when you get there, it's a crap book, so don't worry about it. Okay, so everything's eventual. We've got this one, the classic rainbow one in purple with the random lighthouse on that. I don't really, again, there's no stories in there that are set in a lighthouse, but cool. Um, I like the color of this. Um, this was a bargain as well. Two pounds, so that was my first ever experience on Depop, um, and I've not been off Depop since searching for Stephen King stuff, so that's the one that got me hooked. But Everything in the Ventral is an interesting one because we've got another movie edition, because 1408 had come out in 2007, which is like peak rainbow editions. So again, we've got the golden black, and we've got John Cusack and Samuel L. But for some reason, they saw fit to do a second 1408 tie-in, this one with an orange um, spine. So again, a bit of an underrated collection, but there you go, you can have three copies of it if you're being a rainbow completist. From a Buick 8 then, another nice blue one. 
um, really underrated novel. Um, this, when I was collecting, was a real pig to get hold of. Um, it seems to be a little bit easier now, um, but these, these were going for silly prices at one point when I was looking for it. Again, I just held out, got it for a price I was happy with. A bit of a sticker on the back, but hey-ho. Um, yeah, I like this one. I think it works. Bold. You see this one in hardcover a lot and not so much in paperback. Um, but again, don't let the bastards take more money from you than you're willing to part with. So, Sell. One of the two books that came out in 2006 that helped launch this collection, so it's got a white spine. Um, this is probably the rainbow book that in the UK certainly everybody has a copy of, because this is the first paperback edition of Sell. I saw somebody trying, trying to sell this for £50 the other day. Absolute charlatan. Um, Louis Moore on Depop, if you see him, avoid him. He's just in it for the money. He doesn't care about the rainbows. But yeah, I mean, if you're paying more than £2 to get hold of this, um, you've been robbed. Um, terrible book. Um, not a great cover, to be honest. They, they seem to have a, a surplus of orange ink by the looks of it. But this is kind of, as I say, one of the books that was brand new when it came out. So we've got the white spine. Second book of 2006, another new one, so another white spine, Lisey's Story. I like this one a lot. Um, and get this random butterfly on the H um, and a red H, whereas most of the other H's are black or white and don't have any designs on them. Again, I think they were just having fun with it. So Lisey's Story is interesting. There is a version where this Lisey's Story and this Lisey's Story text is in red. That's super rare. I don't have that one. That is technically still the one outstanding from my collection. Um, this is a great book as well. Yeah, just, just terrific. And there's not been that many editions of Lisey's Story here in the UK, because this was the first paperback edition. I think they've re-released it to tie into the recent miniseries, and obviously we'll be getting one with the new rainbows. Um, but yeah, I like this one a lot. This is this is like my classic Lisey's Story. So Blaze, this is another new one at the time. So we get the white spine, and this is probably before they happened upon the idea of making the Backman books black. Because as you can see, this is a yellow background. Seems like a bit of a missed opportunity, but because this is one of their new ones, they have to go for the colorful front with the white spine. So it kind of messes up the Backman tie in a little bit, which is a shame. And there's no Backman author picture. Um, but again, I guess this one came out and then perhaps they released some of the older ones after this and put a bit more thought into it. Um, but hey, a bit of a bit, bit random when you compare it to the other Backman books in this collection. Nice font here though. Totally different to all of the other fonts, um, which again seems a bit random. Um, they clearly weren't striving for consistency too much, but yeah, it works. So Doom a Key, um, another pretty easy one to get hold of because it was brand new at the time, first paperback edition in the UK. Um, you've got this dripping bleeding Duma key which bleeds over the king um, which again you don't really see on the rest of the uh, of the section but the tricky thing with Duma key is actually getting this edition because most people end up with this big edition randomly they put out this big one um, that one seems to be really easy to get hold of um, and it pisses everyone off because you put it um, on your on your shelves and it's way taller than all the others as you can see um, but that one has a different ISBN and it is really easy to get hold of actually. So um, yeah, if you want the regular size one, you can get it. So coming to the tail end of this collection now and Hodder decided to put out Stephen King Goes to the Movies, which I think came out in the US as well, a different cover. And um, this is a cool collection. Um, I like the gold, I like the red, I think it works. Um, this, is, this is actually a really good collection purely because you get brand new introductions from Stephen King. Um, for all of the stories where he actually comments about the films. And it turns out that, because this is a really interesting selection of um, of stories to choose from, let's have a look. So, 1408, The Mangler, Hearts in Atlantis, Shawshank Redemption, Children of the Corn, and then you get Stephen King's favourite adaptations. At least half of the films in here, you learn from the from the intros that, that King didn't really like them. Um, so it's quite an interesting choice to include those stories and then see him shitting all over the movies. But... Hey ho. And this is another one where you can also get it in super size. Um, so there you go. And last but not least, just after sunset, potentially one that you might argue doesn't fit with the rest of the collection because it's not the bold colour. It's still the same font, but 
I don't know, I liked it more than the addition of Jeff Sefferson's that I had previously, and I feel like it just, it just, just sits in there, just about, it's obviously the last one. This From after, from this point they went on to Under the Dome, which was a completely different style. But yeah, it's fine, I like the colour, um, it, it does look very different to the rest of the collection, and if you decide not to add this to your collection, yeah, I'd have no issues with that. Um, but I technically see it as part of it, so... And it's very, very easy to get hold of this one as well. So if you're looking for a quick win, then um, go ahead and get it. And with that, we are done. So there we go. The entire mid noughts Hodder Rainbow Editions of Stephen King books all done and dusted. Let me know what you think of these in the comments. And if you're collecting them yourself and you have questions that I might be able to help with, drop them in there as well. I'm more than happy to do a second video about these beautiful books. And hey, if anyone from Hodder is watching, you know, if you want me to do some unboxing of your new Rainbow Editions, maybe compare them to the originals, then drop me a line. I'm sure we can work something out. Also, shout out to my mum for the wicked Rainbow Jumper. If you like looking at pictures of these books, then you'll love my Instagram. Head on over, I'm at Dave Musson. Always happy to answer questions about Rainbow Editions or hear suggestions for how I can make my YouTube page better. And if you like this channel, then do consider subscribing. There's loads more stuff for you to kill a bunch of time with here. And of course, me going in depth on each King book all the way through his career. That's it for this one. Appreciate you sticking around this far. It's been quite a long video, but I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it brought dash of colour into your day. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, stay colourful.